Hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Today we're working on the last page of the Haunted Mansion Journal. It is going to be the Mummy Room. And you'll see where I'm going with that <laughs> in just a minute. And uh, we're also going to read off the last of those uh, Life in the 1500s things. Um, and I'm going to uh, probably only have from here on out like maybe the the cover uh, as I'm working on the cover and maybe the Edgar Allan Poe in videos. I'm going to save me putting together this uh, Haunted Mansion journal for the flip through so you'll get a big surprise. <laughs> All right the sneaky peek of the day. Um, we have this little piece right here. Uh, this is one of my my own dyed pages and uh it turned out really dark. Usually when it's baked in the sun, uh, the very top piece will get really, really dark like that. So I really like that grungy look. Now this piece, it got me the biggest, um, the biggest attention or whatever on my, my YouTube channel for a long time. And it's a, uh, envelope. And what it is, is a, um, uh, a movable envelope you can move it to any other page is about this size in your book and, and you can tuck things in it like let's say we got a little card here and we're going to tuck that inside it doesn't have a, a closure down here but then usually your spine or the fold or whatever will stop that and then on this side is the very same I mean this can slide right off I've used a bunch of the Tim Holtz papers this was some uh, texture paste and I did a, a die cut here and some of the ephemeras and this is the window of the envelope as you can see and um, yeah I, I just thought that was a really fun piece and what I'm going to do I'm going to put this uh, at the very end so you'll be able to see what I did here I like this guy he looked very sophisticated <laughs> and I figure he was an antiquity seller this is that embossing folder that's wood or lumber. I think it's called lumber. And I really like that. So I put that on the top and bottom. This is a little bit of tea bag behind here. Another piece of ephemera. And here's a piece of Keong's beautiful antique digital kit, which you can see here at Wonders by Wink on Etsy. And <clears throat> I have a link in a couple of videos back for that if you would like to see it. I'm not going to show you any more. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know how much I've got this decorated, so I can't rush through it. <laughs> Although I know you love your sneaky peeks. Okay. What we're doing now. Like here. <laughs> here is the paper that I chose for this uh, idea. These are just to enhance and decorate with. So I'll set those over here. Uh, but what I did is I took my ruler and my pencil which are over here and I made a I made a pyramid I'm trying to get it up far enough to where you can see the base and everything there we go um, now it is just going to be a five inch base because I want it to be able to fit into my journal on one side then what we did is we went up seven inches which is the point here uh, so what I need to do next is find my center, which this is five inches. It's going to be two and a half. And we're just going to go right up to the, the peak here. And I'm going to follow that line right across and do my dot. Now all I'm going to do now is go down and find the corner. And there's my pyramid. All right. That was easy enough. Let's cut that piece out, and then we're done with this. I love this brick. It's from, um, is it Surfaces? Yeah. It's a Recollections book. I don't know if they have it still. Usually every time I get a good one, they get rid of it. That's Michael's, by the way, if you don't know the, the Recollections brand. All right, and then we're going to cut up this way. I already made one of these so I could see if it was going to work. So, we're going to do a few pieces, or a few uh, portions with this, and then we'll do a few portions with the other. Alright, 
Now I've also got this, the, the gold foil from Michaels. And what I did is I took my little person and I kind of tried to figure out where he would be in here. Once I glued the base, you know, I got to clear the bottom. So another little bit of this, I think the top of my pyramid, well, for the purpose of what I'm doing. And, you know, I don't really know what this is called. <laughs> Is it a hidden a hidden box? A hidden card? It, it's something like that. All right, so that's what we got now. Then we have to take this and cut us a sliver of this. And I'm going with the size of, you know, that opening. And I'm just going to cut the whole thing. This, is, this was 8 half by 11. I already cut one strip from my other one. So I'm cutting this strip, and I'll show you where we're going from there. Okay, now next is, um, I took my little guy, and I kind of stuck him in here to figure out where I needed to score. So, he's right, he's going to go right in there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub this across just to get that white off of it. Ooh, shaking my, <clears throat> shaking my camera arm. All right. There we go. That's good enough. I just need a background. Ooh. Husband came in. I had to shut the door. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to bend that up and get it to score correctly. Looks like I was a little crooked. <laughs> and then this other piece is actually going up underneath of this. So it's going to be about right like that. Yeah. This little guy here, he came from a trio. One of those packs that has the, the multiples in it. I'm also going to do a little bit of inking with my ground espresso on the edge. But I did, I took the taller one and cut him off. And he's in the other pyramid. <laughs> and then there was one little guy that he didn't get used at all. I'll use him on something else eventually. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and put that down right here. And then we're able to cut it to where we need it. Ooh. All right. We'll go ahead and ink around the outside of this while I tell you a little bit about life in the 1800 or 1500s now people would take their bath in may their yearly bath by the way in may so by june they were still smelling pretty good uh so that's when usually they would get married and that's why there's so many june marriages <laughs> so uh even though it had been a month since they took a bath, the, the brides were still smelling a little bit, you know. So they would carry a bouquet of flowers to hide it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So we're going to trim this triangle off up here. We don't need it. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the other thing was uh, when they did take that yearly bath, that they would... um. They would fill the bathtub up with, with bath water. And the husband, the, the head of the household, got to take his bath first. Since he was the head. And then all the sons got to take uh, and use it. Then the girls. Then the children. Then the babies. So by the time it got to the baby... The bath water was so dark that, thus the phrase, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. <laughs> I thought you might like that one. I always wondered where that saying come from. Now, our little guy here, remember this washi tape I used not long ago on those tags I made? I'm trying to find the end of it. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Okay. It made the perfect... Um, 
wrapping for a mummy. <laughs> so I'm going to put it on the back here. And I'm going to see it's got these little feet showing. I thought that was perfect. So I'm just going to loosely start wrapping. Oh, whoops. And I'm going to go back and forth. If it rips, don't worry. You're not going to see the back side. So you just start again. And if you got any kind of white washi, uh, light colored washi, this would be perfect. You don't have to cover him all up. We're just giving the impression that he is a mummy. So I'm sort of doing a loose, well, I'm sorry, I'm probably out of frame on that a couple of times, but it's just going to be, a, oh, a loose um, X in a way, I guess you could say. All right. <laughs> and this says, eat, drink, and be scary. So <laughs> it kind of works, doesn't it? <laughs> I thought it kind of worked. And his little arms are against his body. He, he was perfect. Okay, so we're going to go up here, come back down here. I got enough bats on him, that's for sure. Okay, so that's what he looks like. I don't need that piece there. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, there. All right, next. Uh, this is his little sarcophagus. So he's going to go right in here, but we need to put him in a little shroud. So he's going to have this piece of this bluey colored cheesecloth that I made a while back and I've been using here and there and it's going to go down in here like that I'm trying to kind of piece it maybe that piece will do I don't need that much of it he's just going to lie on it okay here we go and I can neaten that up after I've glued him down because He's going to go down over top of it, and I'll trim around that. I need a little fabric tack. And let me go ahead and... I don't know about that glue, but it always likes to dry up on me. Thank you uh, for coming to visit and watch and see if you can see some ideas that might inspire you, give you a little bit of... Um, juice to get out there and want to make i have a lot of people that say that they have um it's kind of like writer's block but crafter's block <laughs> i guess you could call it but yeah just get out there and watch other people and a lot of times you'll see something that triggers your mind that's what i do i have stuff that triggers me and it gives me this idea for something. And uh, I've, I've always loved Egyptian stuff. So I can't say that <laughs> what it was. I was trying to think of one more room in the house. And I'm thinking, you know, I love Egyptian. And you always have a Christmas tree. <laughs> so uh, a Christmas tree room or something. So that's what this is for me. This is my Christmas tree. When we went on that cruise, oh my gosh, there was this auditorium that we met in. And they had, you know, shows and things there, dances, dance halls, or whatever you want to call it, where, you know, you were entertained. So, anyhow. Now, this is to wrap up and wrap him inside of it, just like that. Now, I am going to cut a little bit of an edge off down here at the bottom just so it kind of reflects the the shape of maybe a coffin or a sarcophagus but boy they had this dance uh this auditorium duded out you you go, had to go upstairs or downstairs to get to it and they had all these paintings oh gosh gorgeous gorgeous stuff okay I don't know that I want that little piece there to stick out, so we're going to get rid of him. All right, our little guy is done. Now, we have this eye. I can go ahead and put him on there. 
that was from one of the the Halloween ephemera packs that I've been using and I'm always almost through with it it was the one that had the the paper dolls and the um, ephemera mixed oh I shouldn't have went over <laughs> I shouldn't have went over <laughs> but does this remind you of a dollar bill <laughs> That's what it reminded me of, and that's what gave me the idea for this. Okay, the other idea, I didn't know whether I wanted this butterfly. This is from, uh, tra what is it, uh, Transparent Things. I have two of them, one for the other project I've got to do. So, I didn't know whether I wanted these wings, but they're going to stick out too far, aren't they? Yeah, if I put that down there. They don't really have anything to do with, uh, you know, this. <laughs> Although that might work. It might fit. I've got about five and a half inches. I just wanted something kind of fun on there. And see, these look like eyes to me on this wing. And I can't think what else I would be using that for. I saw Louise Heinzel using this on one of her books lately. I'll tell you what, we're going to go ahead and cut it. And I'm going to put it on the back side of this. These poor butterflies, I keep debodying them. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this white around, or the clear, around the edge. I don't need that. Because that might kind of get in my way. All right. That little bit off yeah now put that in the trash next another idea I was going to go with for this was googly eyes I've had this pack of googly eyes and I've been trying to figure out what to do with them well I thought you know a, a Christmas tree has to have Christmas balls <laughs> <laughs> so I'm taking my sharpie marker and I'm going around a brick, like that brick is out. And um, I'm darkening it in all the way. And then what I'm going to do is find me a few more spots. Here's one. Let's go with this one. And yeah. And you know how they'll bury all these workers, you know, with the pharaoh and they put their bodies in another chamber or something like that. Um, this is kind of what this is. These are all the, the workers' ghosts peeking out. All right, I think I'm going to put one right here. I'm trying to be a little random with it. Ooh, it's marker. Pew. Okay. And one last one down here. I tried to use my alcohol marker, but the thing kept coming out of the wrong place. And I had to give up on that and just use these. All right. Now what we're going to do. Putting a dot of glue in the middle of each one. There we go. And we're putting our eyes in there. I don't know if I made that one big enough. Here, let me go a little higher up on that one. That works. Okay, as long as his eyes in there, <laughs> that's all that counts. All right. Get on my googly eyes. I'm thinking about putting little fingers coming out too to make it a little creepier. I think this looks a little childy kind of, so I'm not into that. <laughs> so I'm thinking what I'll do is I can put these little three-toed fingers coming out. And that might make it a little scarier. What do you think? Ugh. 
That reminds me of one-eyed spiders. All right, I'll finish that off in a minute. All right, next I have to figure out what side I'm going to put this on. I have to find the page I want to put this on. So give me a second for that. Okay, we're going to use this page across from the dungeon because I don't think they're going to be together. Uh, so, yeah, this will fit perfect because this is a little bigger than a normal page. So let me go ahead and get this all the way down on the page, but just in the right spot. I don't know if this is acetate or what this stuff is. All right, so I'm going to put my butterfly wings right there. Yeah. Get the next one. Okay. See if we can get him in there in the right spot. Yep, and I'm still on the page. Okay, another one of the life in the 1500s. Uh, houses had thatched roofs. That was a bunch of straw piled high on top. It didn't have any wood underneath of it. Uh, so, um... It was uh, probably a couple of feet thick. So when the animals uh, needed to get warm, you know, back then I don't know that they let cats and dogs and uh, mice, anything like that, would crawl up into this and uh, get warm. So, and I'm going to glue this down. I'm not going all the way to the top. I'm going to leave that top open a little bit and start maybe a half of an inch down. Um, so, like I said, all the animals would crawl up in there to get warm. So, when it would rain, sometimes uh, some of the animals would slip and they would fall into the house. So, that came out with the saying, raining cats and dogs. <laughs> oh, gosh. Some of these things are something. All right, let me see if I can get that down. Let me see if I can get my little guy to go in here. I think he will. I just have to let that dry. So let me find another one to tell you. Okay, I've got a few more little pieces here to decorate around the bottom. Here's a mushroom, and I have a, a bug that reminds me of a scarab. He's going to get glued down. Um, now, like I said, it since the the roof was sat thatched all kinds of stuff would fall in the house well in the bedroom that posed a big problem so they had this really nice clean bed uh, to get into yet all these things were falling into it so they came up with the idea of putting four posts around the bed and hanging a sheet over top of it and that's where those big beautiful four poster beds come from And another thing, only the rich could have a, a nice floor, a wooden floor, a stone floor, whatever it would be. And only the poor had dirt, thus the saying, dirt poor. Okay, let's see if our little guy is going to fit inside of here. Yep. I mean, leaving that little bit open worked. There we go. There is our, and it's a pocket. I guess you, you can't really, I was going to say you can't really write in it, but I think you can right here. <laughs> you got a little room to write. Um, so here's our little guy. Um, the other one, he's over here. Let me show you him. Because I had that pyramid done. I just need to find the page to glue it on. So here he is. He's a little taller, so I had to go up a little higher with his. But yeah, that's a little sarcophagus, and you got your mummy inside. 
and I'm going to show you uh, if you watched my uh, video the last video with the garden this is what the other one came out to look like I have a crow here um, I got the spider and a, a usual, the usual stuff I put a mushroom there that one's got from regions beyond and I used one of these I love this outer thing the door that I used in the other one is what a lot of those makers for Tim was putting inside of this door but they had this spiderweb acetate and I chose to use that inside and then you pull this out and it's got the little cross on it and that's where you would write inside so it slides in there and you can actually see it like it's inside of the the tomb you can see the cross it actually pushes in there a little further I think <laughs> yeah so I, I love this but I love how that green I'm, I'm crazy about green but anyhow I thought I'd show you that all right, everybody, uh, I'm done. <laughs> I want to thank all my subscribers and viewers. Everybody have a healthy and a happy day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.